Hello everyone out there on YouTube. Thank you all again for checking out today's gaming news and coverage. If you happen to be new, as always, go ahead, check the channel out. Maybe this can become a place that you come for news and reviews on your open world games, RPGs, MMOs, indie games, as well as lots of news and reviews on big gaming mods and new game releases. So YouTube, what are we talking about today? We're talking about more Cyberpunk 2077, specifically about the status of all five, technically six, main dependency mods, as well as a few others, and their status for being updated following the newest update to Cyberpunk 2077, patch 2.0.1. This is the one that followed the release of Phantom Liberty and fixed up a few of the bugs and the little things that they found shortly after the DLC's launch. So first things first, and that is understanding how these dependency mods work and why this may have been causing issues even if you thought that you had your mod up to date. If a mod has dependencies, even if the mod itself is updated, most times if the dependency mod is not updated, there are going to be little issues and there's going to be things that change and then when the dependency mod does get updated, most times they have to go ahead and update the mod to the newest version. So now let's jump straight into the dependency mods. And we're going to start with Cyber Engine Tweaks, or known as CET. And this is a standalone and gives modders a scripting framework as well as quality of life fixes when they create their mods. This mod is used by a lot of mods and in a lot of ways is the most popular and the most needed mod in the Cyberpunk 2077 modding scene. You then have RedScript, which also is standalone. RedScript is a script compiler and it's used by modders to add and replace game scripts when creating their mods. You then have Red4EXT, again another standalone, and this works as a library to extend the game's engine and allow modders to add new features, adjust behaviors in the game, and add new scripts or manipulate existing ones. Then there's two kind of extensions off of Red4EXT, and that's TweakXL and Archive XL. These are both dependent on Red 4 EXT. And the sixth kind of main dependency mod is going to be known as Codeware. And the good news is that all six of these were updated and should be fully compatible with the latest round of changes that came after patch 2.0.1. So as I said, that's good, right? Yeah, but now you need to check the mods that you already had that were updated prior to CET, Red 4 EXT, Tweak, and Archive being updated for 2.0.1. If they were dependent on these mods, then they may need to have small updates or some of them may be good to go. I recommend just hopping over and checking on some of the mods that you always have in your game. Check their Discord or just go over to Nexus and check their page and see if there's any concern or any kind of update that maybe, maybe it's gonna be coming here in the next few days with all the base mods finally getting updated. So it's been a rough couple of weeks for mods and I know a lot of mod addicted players have been holding off on fully getting into Phantom Liberty until their favorite mods were up and working. But hopefully now all of that is going to be a thing of the past. We should be able to focus and see the modding community finally become stable and calm once again until the next update comes. And let's hope that this game doesn't become something like Skyrim. So let's do a quick recap, get everything up to date. So currently CET or Cyber Engine Tweaks was updated today, October 7th. Red Script was updated on September 28th actually. And the mod creator said that this does not require another update following the latest game patch. And then also today, again, October 7th, because I don't know when you guys are going to be watching this, but also today we had updates to Red 4 EXT, Tweak XL, Archive XL, and Codeware. And that right there is going to cover all six of the major mod dependencies out there in the Cyberpunk 2077 modding community. And what this means is that now all of your favorite mods that relied on one of these dependencies and were waiting on them, can finally go ahead and update and be ready to go. So let's look at a few of the more popular ones. And the first one actually doesn't have any dependencies except for the game itself. And that's Phone Message Overhaul, which was updated last on the 5th of October. The mod is now working for Phantom Liberty, but there seems to be some conflict with a few of the popular quest mods created by Deceptius. There's a fix that's listed over on the posts on the mods page on the Nexus, or you could just wait for an update. The only issue with that 
is that the phone message overhaul mod is extremely popular and it's one of the very few mods that requires it to be installed at the beginning of a fresh playthrough. So because a lot of people have been waiting, some people are wanting to get started. So you can go ahead. You should be okay downloading this one. I don't think it's going to be any problem because as long as you have it active at the beginning of your game playthrough, any updates and things like that will always be okay to update as you go. And also, if you've never checked out the Septius line of mods, you really should and get familiar with his work. He's doing some really amazing things and breaking into the creation of fully functional quest mods in Cyberpunk 2077. His mods have been updated several times since patch 2.0 came out and they're currently all updated and ready to go with the newest version of the game. And on to another hugely, vastly popular one, and that's appearance menu mod is still ironing out some bugs as it gets fully updated but i have it installed and i do know that the spawning works the npc spawning works as well as props and the photo tool so overall it works and for most of the things that you would want to use the mod for you should be okay just keep in mind that you may want to check up on the mod every now and then because the mod creator has said that he's ironing out just a few little tweaks and bugs here and there and hopefully we'll have them all fixed and ready to go here soon all right and just looking through the mods here let's see what else we have that should be good to go we have the very popular transmog system equipment dash ex which was updated today on october 7th following the update of all of its dependencies so that one should be good to go now some that work but i assume we'll be getting additional updates here pretty soon cyberware ex was updated yesterday and this modifies your cyberware slots and expands on them. So with Tweak XL being updated and being a dependency, you may see that it might need a little update. But from what I can tell, it seems like things are going. This is one I'm not going to install because I don't plan on using this. And I don't want to throw a mod in that's going to add additional cyber slots into my game only to take it back out. Because that just looks like it's something that could cause bugs and cause issues down the line. The Virtual Atelier, which is a framework for modders to add their own clothing into the game through the use of a virtual store, was last updated on October 3rd, and it seems to be working. The only thing I see here is that some people were having some issues with the menu system. There is another mod called Mod Settings, which they were waiting to update. It's an optional mod if you want some of the functions that the stores can add but the mod itself the virtual atelier store seems to be working fine which means all the clothing mods that add their clothing to this framework should also be good to go and i could keep going on and on but it's about time for me to install the last few mods that i want for my fresh brand new playthrough that i'm getting ready to start for phantom liberty so yeah things look like they're finally in that last stretch heading home and hopefully we're past all the delays that have happened over the last several weeks. But hey, we knew this was coming. A full game revamp with patch 2.0, followed by a new expansion a week later. And then the quick fix patch that followed shortly after Phantom Liberty came out. So make sure you show some love to the mod creators too while you guys are out there downloading and checking on your favorite mods. These guys and girls have been going through a whirlwind of just crazy and being asked thousands of times a day when they're going to have their mod updated how much longer is it going to be why isn't it ready now i mean imagine being the person that created cet or red for ext and having literally the whole modding community for cyberpunk 2077 sitting and waiting for your update now that's some all kinds of crazy so anyways it's time to wrap this up everyone enjoy be safe and i will see you in the next video.